I'm gonna share some Vol'jin strategies with you today that are really insanely fun and just incredibly consistent as well. Uh, so Vol'jin, in case you don't know his zero power, he swaps stats with units. As you can see now, I swapped the Weaver with the Elemental in the shop. So essentially, this can allow you to abuse it really well. I get really lucky here with a triple Weaver. Um, now, the strategy that I'll be talking about is the Macaw. Uh, then the one drop, the demon, the death rattle demon, you'll see it in a second. And Terragosa, getting insane health numbers like you saw in the, the thumbnail on your units. So that's what we're gonna achieve, some crazy high numbers that people just can't deal with unless they have poison. So the strategy isn't waterproof, it can be countered, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but yeah, as Vol'jin, you, so if you want to do the strategy, you need beasts in the lobby for the Macaw, you need demons in the lobby, obviously, and dragons for Terragosa. Those are a lot of requirements, but if you have those requirements, you're fine. So here, Triple Weaver, nice. I'm gonna play very greedy holding this uh, demon in hand until I find a demon to eat. So I'm taking a bit of damage in the early game for a potential better mid game. Um, and I decided to freeze here because I feel like I wanna do Sorrow Weaver. Now, as Vol'jin, I like getting some early stats on the board with big ass Wrath Weavers, big ass Sorrowlisks, because, uh, you know, if you just build random big units in the early game, you can put the stats on a better unit like Deflectobot or other Divine Shield units, right? So essentially, you just make big stuff and put the big stuff on better units. That's how I play Vol'jin in a normal lobby. Uh, that's how I think everyone plays Vol'jin. But I wanted to still do the uh, meme stuff. I don't even know if it's, it can be called a meme, uh, but the, uh, the strategy that I talked about, I really wanna force it because I think it is forcible. I think it is something that you can just hard force and get away with. So I'm gonna stay on tier three here. I'm just gonna scale up these Wrath Weavers uh, this Wrath Weaver and the Sorrowless buying random Death Rattles, mainly Demon Death Rattles. There's a lot of Demon Death Rattles, uh, that's why this strategy is so good. Like, there is, well, there's a card that we're looking for. Um, I forgot the name, but this is the key piece for the strategy. But yeah, there is on tier 1, 2 Demons with Death Rattles, so they scale up both the Wrath Weaver and the Sorrowless. On tier 2, there is the Taunts, the 3-3 tree, tree Taunt that also has a Death Rattle. Uh, you can just buy random death rattles or random demons as well. So this, with a run out, this is something you can do in like Sir Ref Reaver. Um, but yeah, it, it is okay for a little bit. So I'm just rolling here, finding my calls, uh, finding the tier one demon, and looking for Terragosa. Uh, I had also found this Katrana tier or Vol'jin that makes me immune, so that way I don't die because somehow I'm at 13 HP. I've been playing rather greedy, like holding stuff in hand. Uh, getting some bad matchups, so I'm at 13 HP. I've taken some massive hits, um, but I'm still trying to go for it. I found the Terragosa, I do have the Macaw, I do have the tier 1 demon that gives health to other units, uh, and now I want to slowly transition into this build. And first things first, we want to get our um, demon as big as possible, because of course the more health it have, uh, like the more health it has, the more it's gonna put on your other units on the board. So luckily I built this massive weaver and I'm, my, my goal is to put the stats from this massive weaver on this demon. And then I could use a Sarlis to buff up maybe a Macaw or something. Um, I even lost to this ghost, so I've been holding back a lot. As you can see, I'm literally at the edge of dying. And now it's time to pop off, it's all or nothing, right? So here is how you force this. I'm still tier three, mind you, I'm really committed to this trying to just hard roll for the pieces and trying not to die by doing Sir Weaver at the meantime. Found a triple demon. Four drops really don't matter, like the triple doesn't really mean anything here. Uh, like whatever whatever four drop this is, I probably won't use it. But, you know, of course the triple demon is a lot better than the, the single demon since it doubles the health buff on your board. Uh, I cycle some more stuff and, um, oh, and I, I have found another triple, I forget about that, which I I can't take right now, I have to sell my Katrin out here. Um, which isn't that bad, because if you do this, you also want to have as few units on the board as possible. If you really want to be greedy, generally speaking, you want to have like nothing on the board. So that way, the odds of your death rattle health buff landing on your uh, Terragosa is the highest. Uh, I also want to give a little shout out to Bofer. Bofer has pulled this bolt off multiple times to great extent. He, he has like a video blow up with him with insane health amounts on his units, on his Terragosa. 
So uh, I <laughs> didn't have that much of a high roll game because I found my stuff really, really late. I don't know what turn it is, but two people are already dead. And I only just started. I still have a 4 4 Tarago, so I only just started doing my stuff. So um, if you really want to get the most out of this, try to play with as few units as possible. So, of course, the odds again are higher of um, your health of landing on Terragossa. So, I could have sold my Weaver and could have sold his Demon here. But again, I'm on 2 HP. I don't think I could have been too greedy. I also like playing a Taunt. So that way, my shit can't get sniped. Because last fight, both of my car and my Terragossa got sniped. And I, so, I again didn't scale. Like, as you, as you see right now, my board, I just have the big Demon. That's it. I didn't scale at all. Uh, and it's very late. So even if you low roll super hard with this bolt, like I've been low rolling like crazy, right? Uh, it's still insanely strong. This is my first turn of it actually working out. And look at the health on this McCall already. Uh, look at the insane stats I have on the board. Even this fight, I only landed one health buff on my Terragossa. Uh, and how this bolt basically continues to scale is you always put uh, the highest health on your demon. So right now my Terragossa has a little bit like four more HP than the demon So this is a great time to swap my demon and my Terragossa So you just keep on swapping the Terragossa with the highest health with your demon and that's how you scale up because uh, the, There's gonna be more health landing on the Terragossa you give it to the demon and it kind of I don't know if it's exponential I don't think so, but it just scales up Quite rapidly. I think it. Yeah, I think it is exponential. So as you will see in this fight, Makar triggers the demon, lands on Terragossa, Terragossa gonna have insane health, put it on the demon again, it's gonna have insane health again. Um, and where this build goes late game is on tier 5 you can have Baron, so ra you'd rather be on tier 4, uh, you're tier 3 to roll all the pieces, but if you triple you want to triple into 5s, because Baron, because Spore, Spore with a bunch of HP is really good. Um, so that's why I'm taking this tier 1 pair, even though you usually don't take an Acolyte pair. I took the triple. Because, well, Rattler is also a really good 5 drop, giving my Makar Reborn, because one of my Makars still only has 3 HP, so I could Reborn that instead. Um, and yeah, I, I played Selfless as well, because of course there are can keep permanent shields, which is something that you could aim for. You could triple your Saragossa. This bolt can go multiple ways. Uh, how it gets countered is Poison. If people have Poison, well, you're kind of screwed, unless you play around it to some extent. Uh, if people have Mega Wind Free, stuff like that, they could snipe your entire board before you get value. That's why I play Taunts here. I prefer protecting my board because I know people have Cyclones like this opponent uh, and Wildfires. This guy has a Golden Nomia massive stats and I already outscaled it. Do you guys remember how shitty my Referee vs. Sarlis board was and how long it took me to do anything? I beat this guy with Golden Nomi and kill him here, I think, even. Just by doing this stupid <laughs> stuff with Terragossa and the demon. Um, so that shows you how easy it is to force this and get away with, with a cheesy win, even on 2 HP. I, I left him alive, so the game is gonna go a bit longer. The longer it goes, the higher your HP. Um, and at this point, I'm just rolling for the triple Macaw. Maybe triple Terragossa, but it could be bait. I again just swap the highest health with the demon. Here is another crazy mech player, double mackerel. Um, his buster didn't even die because our taunts are so weak. So, I'm definitely not playing this game greedy. Or, I mean, the early game I played greedy, but this late game, I'm playing my taunts. I'm trying to play for the win. And uh, this guy is definitely very, very dead. Max, Max is really good in this meta. It doesn't do anything against this bolt. This bolt, like, eats Max for breakfast. They, they just have divine shields, they just lose to all of the health that you have. They're, they're, they usually don't run much poison. Um, I just only bolts that poison beat this really, or bolts that well have a cyclone, a mega wind free, or and a sniper stuff. So I found Baron very late again. Uh, it's a bit late for it, but uh, final fight. I still want to meme around. I'm still gonna play it, I think, because this this Terragossa now has w like 1,400 health, while my demon only has 300 for uh, 370. So if I swap these. You can see the effect that the demon is gonna have on my board now. Uh, if you thought last fight my units were big, now it's gonna be like more than three times the size. So, yeah, I also picked up Argus so I could let go of my um, my taunt at some point if I really want to like fit in the spore, for example, that I froze. I froze for next game because obviously this is gonna be a lost fight. He didn't find poison, so I win. It's very simple. 100 HP is nothing. And uh, I'm just gonna let this fight play out. It's a pretty long one because, well, I don't really have a spore on a board, and my highest attack unit has 54. So it's a bunch of bouncing around. 
Uh, but yeah, this is the build. This is how you like can cheese when super easy on Vol'jin. It's what I do. I just stay down into tree and force this build, try not to die. Um, and if your opponents have poison, you can play around it a little bit with Ghoul, because Ghoul could kill spores. Or play Selfless Hero as well first, so it lands on your board and protects it, and your Terragosos can have it permanently. Uh, essentially, you just only late game gotta attack a little bit and think about how you don't get screwed over. But early mid game is just all about being strong and doing the stupid shit and watching people die. Uh, even my stupid Acolyte doesn't die. Look at how much damage it's tanking, it's crazy. It's a it's a one drop by the way. So uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, if this is the first time that you're on my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I usually don't really do videos like this. Usually I do like full guides or podcast episodes or like updates, whatever. But this is kind of fun. I do enjoy uploading gameplay uh, once in a while. Not just straight gameplay, but try and make it informative if possible like this. So if you enjoyed it, let me know down below as well what you thought of this format. I think it's casual, fun to do, like highlighting a game giving you guys some tips uh, and have a good day. Yeah, thank you for watching.